welcome back to my channel. We are doing something a little bit different today. I am digging deep into my thrifting archives and we are doing some thrift flips. Yes. I know in quarantine, things have been really difficult because if you're a thrifter like me, you haven't been able to go to a thrift store. And that's to me like so creative, just like that process of thrifting and putting things together. So I've had to kind of like reconfigure where I'm being creative in my life. But there's also just, I felt like this need in me, like this guttural need to like make something with my hand. And today I'm gonna show you all of those DIYs that I'm doing, those thrift flips, these are all pieces that I formerly thrifted in my past pre-quarantine life. You're not really going to need a whole lot of supplies to do this stuff. I will be linking all the materials I use below just in case you need to order something on Amazon. I also, for one of the projects, ordered some paint from my local Michaels store and I was able to just place the order online, pick the items up the next day no touching people clorox those bags what is this clorox those bags i'm in a weird mood guys this quarantine is like but anything that you'll need you could basically be able to order it online i think you're really going to like them so let's just jump into these four thrift flips so for this first thrift flip we are going to be turning this t-shirt into a cinched crop top Cinch, some pens some thread that's the same color as your t-shirt scissors and then obviously a t-shirt. This is one I thrifted a few months ago. I'm just starting by laying my t-shirt flat on a flat surface and I'm just going to get all the wrinkles out and basically measure where I want the hem of the shirt to hit my waist. And then I'm just taking this water solvent pen. It erases when it gets wet and I'm just marking where I want my cutting guide to be chopping off about probably 10 inches or so make sure to leave about an inch on the bottom for when you make your hem because it'll end up hitting a little bit shorter obviously once you add your elastic waistband so now i'm just flipping it inside out so i can start making my hem on the bottom i am starting by rolling up the bottom of the t-shirt i ended up going about a half inch up and then i'm just taking my pins so look at me go i'm like a real seamstress here guys so i have now taken my t-shirt with my pinned hem over to my sewing machine and i'm just sewing up the hem of the t-shirt following the pins as my guideline and this is super important make sure you leave a one inch hole and you're not connecting the hem because now you're going to loop your elastic band through that hole you left so measure a piece of elastic that's the same length as your waist we are going to attach a safety pin to the end of the elastic band the bigger the safety pin the easier this is going to be you're going to start by just inserting the safety pin into that hole you left in the hem of your t-shirt and you're just going to maneuver that safety pin and piece of elastic through the whole hem of the t-shirt then I align the ends of my elastic band and I'm just going to sew these together with my sewing machine, making sure to do a lot of back stitching so that the elastic band is super secure. And the last step is just sewing up the one inch hole we left in the hem and then we will be done. Looking good. Okay, so here is the first top and I'm definitely going to roll it up a little bit I think on the sleeves, but I am so excited about how this turned out and it's also just something that's super super simple and easy i mean you literally just like sew a straight line stream your you know elastic through and you have a whole new top this totally looks like something they would be selling at like brandy melville or something like that or like urban outfitters for like 40 dollars. and i think this tea i thrifted this past year and it was super cheap i mean it was like probably five dollars everybody has a t-shirt in their closet that they're just like kind of sick of and i feel like this is the perfect way to just give it a little new life and maybe, maybe get a little bit more wear out of it even if you didn't have a sewing machine i feel like you could like pretty easily do this by hand if you were like super motivated you know i just i feel like i'm gonna end up doing this to like so many of my t-shirts because 
I wear them so much more when they're not having to be like shoved into my pants and adding like that extra bulkiness. Also, I am not the best sewer. So again, like all these projects are for people that are like at a, you know, very basic level of sewing. My mom taught me how to sew in high school and fun fact, I legit sewed my top for the first day of my junior year of high school and it was so bad. It was like a sweetheart neck and the boobs were so lopsided, like it was awful, but I was so proud of that top. So all that to say, I think that like, you know, this is obviously something that you basically don't have to have much skill to really do and it looks super cute when you're done so the elastic t-shirt was so easy that i decided to do the same thing with this uh super vintage little sears nightgown that i had to me this looks like something an indie brand like lisa says god would sell and i'm really happy with how it turned out so y'all need to get on this thrift flip it's such a good one and literally just like so easy this next thrift flip was my favorite one I did. I am transforming this pair of white vintage denim into a super cool pair of painted checkerboard pants. You'll obviously need a plain pair of denim. I chose this pair of white vintage denim. You could also do a denim jacket or canvas. Make sure it's laid flat on a flat surface. You'll need a measuring tape, an angled paintbrush, a pencil, and some paint. I got an acrylic paint just because I really like this color. I only ended up using one of these and I actually purchased two other colors just to make sure that I got the exact right color I was looking for since I had to order it online and I ended up going with a Spanish olive color. Super important, but before I did anything on my pants, I made sure to get my plan in place by drawing everything out on this canvas bag. So once I had my plan in place and I somewhat knew what I was doing, I took my measuring tape and I just started making one inch tick marks going up the inseam and outside leg of the pants. So this would act as my guideline for when I went to draw the actual lines of the grid. Now I'm just doing the same thing, but making the one inch tick marks for my vertical lines that I will be adding. I'm going to start drawing the grids. I suggest using something sturdier than a floppy tape measure. I eventually figured that out on the second leg, but this is super easy if you just have like a ruler or something, just make those grid lines and this is what it looks like when it's done. Now we can finally start the tedious painting process. Yes, this takes a long time, but they look so freaking cool when they're done. So I just put a little bit of paint on a paper plate here and I just started by alternately painting each square in this amazing green color. My strategy for painting was to pretty much try to be as precise as possible, but I knew I wasn't going to be exact, but that was kind of, you know, the fun in it that this still looks like something that was handmade and one of a kind, but I basically started by outlining each square and then filling it in as I went and that seemed to work pretty well. I then continue this on the entire front of the pants. Pulling the pants on, they look so good guys. Like I feel like the checkerboard effect really, really turned out super well. I was a little bit worried that it was going to look a little bit messy because obviously I was hand painting each one of these squares, but I really love the final effect of it. It reminds me of like Japanese woodblock kind of prints. Like the lines aren't totally perfect, but it looks like a piece of art. Okay, they are in the mirror just so you can get a really good look at them. This is a raw denim, FYI. So if you wanna do this with any sort of denim in your closet, I would look for that denim that doesn't have any stretch to it. That's going to be 100% cotton just so your jean or whatever material you're using doesn't stretch out and like make the paint crackle or anything. I obviously haven't tried it on any material that has any spandex in it, but I imagine that it probably would work best on something that was 100% cotton. This is just everything I envisioned them to be, and I am obsessed with them. 
So for this next thrift flip, I'm taking this vintage quilt that I got at the Nashville flea market and I am just going to be cutting it into different shapes and making patches out of it that I am then sewing onto this thrifted utility jumpsuit. This has been a bit of an on and off again project for me. So a few of the patches are already sewn on and the rest are just already pinned on there. But I'm basically gonna be showing you how to transform a piece of clothing with just some patches. In order to make your patches, you're going to need a quilt of some sort, but you could totally use denim if you wanted to make a denim patch or maybe just a thicker fabric that you have lying around or some other piece of clothing that you wanna make a patch out of. So I started by laying my quilt flat on the ground. Then I just started cutting out my patches. I first did a very large square. You could also cut this down into that little flower shape. I did a rectangle, a triangle, so many shapes. I took my pins and then just started pinning the patches onto the jump where I wanted them to be and I could kind of like lay it out and just see how it was all going to look together before I started sewing anything. So you can see that's what it looks like when they're all pinned on, pretty little flower. To sew the patches on, you're going to need scissors, thread, and a needle. I grabbed all that stuff, went to my porch, grabbed a glass of wine just so I could relax and sew my patches on while I was just enjoying our porch. I love sewing and embroidery projects like this because it's really nice to multitask while you're like watching TV or listening to a podcast and just like do something with your hands. So I'm starting just by going under the inside of the pant leg. Obviously you don't wanna sew up your pant leg. Then you're probably gonna wanna take a wine break. So I use what is called an overcast stitch to sew my patches on. Don't worry, I had to Google what kind of stitch this was because I didn't even know, but it is super easy and probably the most effective for putting your patches on. Derek just brought me more wine. Hi everybody. So you're basically just going to repeat all of that and just keep sewing all those patches on. It takes a while, but it's going to look super cool when it's done. Look at my how cute is the little heart? Oh my gosh, guys. This has been in the making for so long. I have had that quilt since the summertime and have had that like vision of making patches out of it once I found this, probably like in the fall. And just because it's all hand sewn except for this back panel, it just takes a lot of time. I love projects like this just when you feel like you need something to do with your hands, which doesn't everybody right now. This one, obviously I had a bunch of those patches on there before just because I've been working on it for so long, but I love how it finally turned out. And I think I'll like continue kind of adding things on as I go. Like I kind of feel like now I'm looking at it. Maybe I need something here and maybe I need something here. So I love these kind of projects that feel like super ongoing and you could really do this DIY thrift flip with whatever you have in your closet. A denim jacket or jeans, um, just a regular jacket, anything that's kind of a little bit more structural that has some like substance to it. It's the perfect like feminine jumpsuit and I'm loving it. So for this last thrift flip, we are going to do something super transformative to this oversized 90s dress. I'm going to be cinching it in at the waist and adding a little elastic band, and then I'm going to chop it, make it a short dress, and add a little ruffle bottom. It is going to look so cute when it's done and perfect for spring and summer. So I'm starting by placing my dress flat on the ground, inside out, just making sure all of the hems line up and that it's totally flat. Then I am taking my measuring tape and a pen and I am marking up 10 inches from the bottom hem of the dress. This is where I will be cutting off this bottom panel of the dress to make my ruffle bottom. So you're gonna make sure to keep this bottom 10 inch panel when you cut it off. Now I'm marking 20 inches from the hem of the dress. This is where I will make my second cut. I'm basically going to be moving that 10 inch panel that we're gonna cut off from the bottom to meet this hem and then just discarding that middle section so that I can make it a short dress. The last part I am marking is where I'm going to add the elastic waistband to the dress. Make sure again that you're adding this a little bit lower than where you actually want it to hit just because when it cinches up, it's gonna sit a little bit higher, yes. So I'm just making that first cut, the 10 inches off the bottom. Here's that 10 inch panel from the hem that we are going to keep for our ruffle. 
Now we're going to chop the middle section off that was 20 inches above the hem. You won't need to keep this middle section, but you can totally save this piece of fabric and just use it for another project going forward. So now I am pinning the elastic onto the waistband of the dress to just give it a little bit more structure since it is a bit oversized. And because the waistband of the dress itself is going to be obviously bigger than the elastic piece, I am just taking parts of the dress and making little pleats or gathers and then pinning that onto the elastic. Now that our dress is all prepped, we are going to grab that 10 inch panel that we are using to make a ruffle bottom and you're just going to do a stitch about a fourth of an inch from the raw edge of the panel straight down. Make sure you're not doing any back stitching because in order to get this ruffled bottom, we're basically going to pull the thread through the panel and it's going to ruche the fabric. So make sure you're not doing any back stitching on it. You're just doing one straight stitch down the raw hem of the panel. Now is the fun part where I'm making the ruffled bottom. So I'm just taking the thread from one of the ends of the panel and then just pulling that and then pulling the fabric down and just kind of creating this ruched effect down the length of the panel. This is what it looks like when it's all done. You'll see it looks like a ruffle. Look at me go guys. So now that my ruffle is done, I'm going to pin that to the hem of my dress. Make sure the front side of the fabrics are facing each other when you go to pin. Make sure that before you pin your ruffle to the hem of your dress that you measure the hem of your dress and that it matches the measurement of your ruffle so you don't have to repin it like I did. Here's what it looks like when it's all pinned up and now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. Again, this is gonna be another quick sew. You're just sewing a straight line to attach the ruffle to the hem of the dress and I am sewing this at about a half inch from the hem. Okay, I just finished sewing the ruffle bottom. Okay, this looks like pretty legit. Look at me, I had doubts guys. I wasn't gonna lie to you. But this looks really good actually. Now I'm going to go in and sew my little elastic waistband and then we'll be done. Last step is going to be sewing our elastic onto the waistband of the dress. Make sure you're just sewing a straight line directly down the middle of your elastic and make sure you do some back stitching on the ends of the elastic so it is fully secured. Oh my gosh guys, the elastic band worked. That was it. I can't wait to try this on and see what it looks like. This is looking like really good. Guys, I literally can't even believe this is the same dress. Like, I mean, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with my skills on this one. I love the little ruffle bottom. I feel like it adds that little touch of like femininity to this outfit and also helps transform it a little bit better since I pretty much kept the top part all of the same. I'm going to just add my belt on top yes this is just going to make the look and i also rolled the sleeves a little bit and then with my belt i feel like it is perfect and it definitely just looks like a totally new dress i'm just like proud of myself that i did this to be honest i think it looks really really good so those were my four thrift flips. I hope you guys got inspired to maybe take some pieces from your wardrobe that you just have laying around or even just create your own thrift flips. I hope that my videos can kind of speak to you during these times and, you know, just bring a little bit of light and joy into your life. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on those notifications to get notified every time I post a video, which is every Thursday. Follow me on Instagram to see how I'm styling up my thrifty content and also to see some of these thrift flips styled up on my Instagram feed. And until next time, bye!